Hey guys, Scott here. Today I want to talk about Peanuts' comments on tunneling and decisive strike in general, so we have an actual behavior level feedback on the whole idea of uh, tunneling and decisive strike and perks to counter it and all that good stuff. Um, so the first part is that they were saying that this is not intended to be a cure to tunneling. It's not going to bring an end to the entire tunneling playstyle, which is sort of weird because they don't really ever follow up on this by saying we want to remove that. It's almost like they're saying like, don't worry guys, tunneling will still be here. You can still do it. It's fine. I feel like we should be moving away from that, promoting gameplay that's not that and spreading hooks and stuff like that and making the game more about that. I'm not sure why they didn't really like clarify there that you should probably be going away from that. It's not something we want to stay in the game. It's not something that should be defended, but um, he is accurate though. Like he is definitely accurate. This will not remove tunneling. It will just make tunneling less incentivized because the additional stun time can be a bit brutal if you are trying to tunnel someone out of the match. Um, so that is accurate, and I do have to agree that it's not going to end tunneling, but we will find it, in his own words, to have more consistent value when it activates. And that's really the main thing. A lot of the times, if you use DS, but you're hooked in sort of a dead zone, the, the basically two-second stun you get is not really enough time to get anywhere. Um, a lot of people always say great players can always make use of it, but that's not even true as well. If you're hooked in a bad area, you can't get to something good in three seconds. Like, uh, it's just not enough time to do that. And obviously, good players will try to get themselves in a better area. Like, they're going to use the fact that they have 10 seconds of borrowed time and try to navigate there. And for the most part, I do 100% agree that good players are obviously going to have much better use of decisive strike than the average or low skill players. Um, but it still doesn't change the fact that the value that you get is based on a lot of different variables of where you are, what stage of the match it's in. It's just a lot more complicated than just good player get value, bad player don't get value. So I do agree that giving it more consistent value in the match is a good thing. And I think that's really all they're trying to do with this change. So the next part, though, is on disabling killer powers. This is a widely suggested thing. My two versions of Decisive Strike were this one, where you would have like a three or four second stun, but then make it so killer's powers were disabled for four to eight seconds or something like that. And the entire point of that is to equalize killers like Nurse and Blight from Freddy or something like that. So if, you know, a Blight's power is disabled for eight seconds and, you know, a Freddy's power is disabled at eight seconds, it makes them more uniform. And so you're punishing the very weak killer way less than the very strong killer. Um, so that would be more fair, in my opinion, because it would make it so Blight and Freddy are basically equally countered by DS for that time. Obviously, after the timer, Blight will catch back up still faster than a Freddy can, but it'll level the playing field quite a bit. And I think that's a really good idea that a lot of people do agree with. Uh, my other suggestion was the stun timer is simply based on how many gens are left. So if you stun or if you want to decide to strike someone at five generators, it's a seven second stun at four gens, it's a six second stun at three gens and so forth until if there's like, you know, one generator left, it's like a three second stun. Basically just to prevent people from tunneling people out at five gens or if they really want to do that, they're going to eat a huge penalty. So those were my two basic ideas, and it seems like they really don't want to do the Disabling Killer Powers version, which I think is a shame. Um, now here's the part that bothers me. Peanuts tries to say the reason that they can't do it is because it's too complicated. It's, you know, what happens if there's active traps on the ground? What, what about passive chain hunts? Will it disable this? Will it disable that? I think he's overcomplicating it to simply dissuade people from suggesting it further, and I, I don't really buy this. First of all, He's overcomplicating it way too much by saying, what about passive stuff? Obviously, passive stuff doesn't matter. If you decide to strike and run to a trapper's trap, you still get trapped. It's you run into a hag's trap. The thing is still going to pop up. She can't teleport to it, but everything that's passive in the match, a chain hunt active, that's still going to affect you. It's just very simple. Active power disabled. That's it. You don't have to think any more complicated than that. Um, and the reason that they, or he said that, that this is too complicated to do is because coding-wise, that's difficult to have a specific caveat to disable every single killer's power for one specific perk. And I would agree with that if they didn't already have that function in the game. I don't know if you guys have ever used the Blighted Serum before, but this is a universal add-on that makes it so every single active killer power in the game does not do what it's supposed to do. Instead, you just go forward and slide for a certain amount of time, and then your power is returned. So they already have a universal function that replaces every single killer's power in the game. 
that already exists. All they have to do is repurpose the function instead of making you go forward to just do nothing for X amount of seconds. I don't think it's as complicated as they're trying to pretend it is. And they're trying to say that, you know, you don't understand with the whole coding and stuff. No, I think that function pretty similarly already exists. And I can't think of a good excuse otherwise because the Blighted Serum already literally does that. So I don't think that's a good excuse there. And I think they're just sort of trying to say, well, you don't get coding, so it, it can't be done. It's billions of variables and stuff. I think it already exists. Again, I am a pretty amateur game designer. I've only done a couple of mods and stuff like that, so I'm not incredibly knowledgeable about all that stuff. But it truly does seem like the base function for replacing a killer's power with nothing already exists, and they can definitely do that. Um, now, changing it from an add-on to a perk obviously is going to have some type of thing. But my, my whole point is, it's not really as complicated as they think they are, and they're basically pretending it's more complicated than it is so people will just stop suggesting that idea because they don't want to do it. That's just my opinion on it. It could be completely cynical and false and maybe there is truly something I'm just not getting, um, but that's actually what I think is going on. So those are their thoughts on uh, Decisive Strike in general. I say there because I assume he's speaking for behavior as well at that point. So it's, it's mostly accurate. Like I, I do think that tunneling will be harder and I do think the correct way to solve issues like this obviously it's on the devs to do something like that but um the way that you do it sadly is through negative reinforcement not positive reinforcement um the community has shown time and time again that if you have positive reinforcements for something people will still benefit from those while doing the negative reinforcement thing um an example is something like, you know, uh, Pain Resonance. Uh, pain Resonance is a perk that really works if you hook everybody once. It's a perk that is a lot better if you spread pressure and every single player is hooked rather than you focusing one guy. But really what happens is you can still focus one guy and as long as you get one hook on the other three people, which is probably going to be doable, now you have more gen regression in a, in a 3v1. So this is my whole point. You can't really have positive... Um, reinforcement, you can only have negative reinforcement. The only way you stop tunneling and camping and things like that is if you make it equal to or worse than not doing it. And that's it. That's the only way you can do it. So, like, at the end of the day, if you just make it so that uh, it's hard... People still want to kill someone as quickly as possible. And as long as killing a player as quickly as possible is the safest method to victory, it doesn't matter what incentives or positive reinforcements you do, people will always gravitate towards that. That's just, they want to win, so they're going to pick the thing that results in them winning the most. It doesn't matter how many blood points or whatever you throw at them, they're still going to prefer doing that on average. Obviously, there will still be people that are outliers and stuff, but on average, I do think negative reinforcement is more important than positive reinforcement for Dead by Daylight. I'm not saying as like a, a parent or life in general, but that is more effective because people will simply take the good stuff for granted, still do the bad stuff, and benefit from the now easier game that they have. That's the problem. Um, but that's it. Those are uh, Behavior's thoughts on Tunneling and Decisive Strike overall. I do agree that it's not really going to go anywhere. It should go somewhere. Decisive Strike will now have more consistent value, and I don't fully buy them not being able to simply disable active killer powers uh, as a better alternative to the perk that a lot of people have suggested. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.